All right, we're going to get this lesson started. Um, before I get started, you know, I'm going to get started right now. Uh, give all thanks and praises and honor. First of all, to uh, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, Barak Tha Yahweh, Barak Tha Yahweh Shah, Barak Tha Yahweh, Barak Tha Yahweh Shah. I also want to give thanks and honor to the elders and the prophets and the disciples that came before us. They're pushing this truth for thousands of years, but thousands of years, we'll get into that. But they were pushing this mighty truth, and we'll give honor and thanks to them. And I want to give honor and thanks to the Aquas and Aquam, listen, learn. In today's lesson, we're going to go over uh, Revelation 20. And a lot of people, I mean, they understand it, but they'll get confused about what exactly it's pertaining to. So we're going to kind of break down Revelation 20 or the Apocrypha of John. And I'm going to just be, and I'm going to just uh, give you a, a light summary of it. Revelation 20 basically details uh, a history long or a, a, a basically, a, basically as long as the beginning of time, a struggle between good and evil, good and evil. It first started with, uh, Cain and Abel, and then it was Jacob and Esau. If y'all watched our video, we broke that down, how Abel and Cain and Jacob and Esau spiritually, you know, that's the same combo. Abel being Jacob and, you know, Cain being Esau. So basically that revelation, that's just that, that same, that, uh, that struggle between good and evil being played out throughout the history of time, which is uh, the history of our ancestors. And so I just want to tap into that and tap in. I want to get uh, Genesis 25 and 23. And Yahweh said unto her, Two nations are in, in thy womb. Two men of people shall be separated from thy bow. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. But we understand this didn't happen. And the Most High, and the Most High already put put this plan into fruition that He was going to raise up the people for uh, destruction and devastation. If we uh, under understand what Esau's real name is, real name is, and we just understand his other one. We understand that that it means destroyer or destruction or waste away. And just like it says in Romans 9, 21, verses 21 to 23, I'll get it right quick. Has not the potter have power over the clay, the same lump, that the one vessel into honor, another to dishonor? So basically, just like I said, Esau, we understand how the one means would destroy or waste away. So the Most High can create a vessel or a people for honor. He can create a vessel for dishonor. Just like he created Jacob for honor, he created Esau for dishonor. This is just what he did. This is how he wanted to teach his lesson and bring out his plan apart. Verse 22. What if Yahweh is willing to show his wrath and make his power known? Endure with much long suffering the vessels of wrath was fitted to destruction. So just like I said earlier, this is just, this is confirmation of what I just said. He, he always repeats himself. And just like I said, Adawam means destroy and waste away. And I just said he created Esau for destruction. Right here he just said it. He said to, to show his wrath or to show how, how powerful he really is so people understand that he is power. He is Jehovah. He's going to create a people or create create a wrath of destruction, long suffering, you know, vessels of destruction, fit for destruction, fit for Yahweh. So that's where you get this understanding from. Him. And then verse 23. And then that he got made, <clears throat> he might make known the riches of his glory and the vessels of mercy, which he had afford and prepared unto glory. Just like he said, he made Jacob. So people will know the vessels and the riches of his glory. So that's why he made Jacob for that honor. So when people understand the riches and the glory of Yahweh, which is power, they'll understand that that is Jacob. Now, a lot of people, they'll, they'll get this verse and they'll get an understanding. And I'll be like, well, who are you to uh, question the pur purpose of the message that Yahweh created it for? Like, who are we to question what he created this nation for or what he created this, this person for? Who are we to question it? We are not. You know, we must all play our part, play our lot. Just like Brother Dan says, we all, we all got a lot to play. Everybody got their own lot. And when we play, when we play, our, por when we play our part, you understand that things will come out, and everybody got their lot. It might be a short lot or a long lot. And an example of this, like you see all these celebrities coming out saying they're in the truth. Well, Yahweh has a lot for them, and that lot is very short. It's, it's short lived because they're, they're not really in it. So he'll give them a little shine just for right now, but he's going to take it away real quick because they understand they're still on the other side. So he's just using them to get more of his people to come to the right direction. That's all he's using them for. 
<clears throat> and another thing that I want people to understand is that is that also when um when uh, his father Isaac gave Esau the blessing, he basically if you didn't you gotta understand the meaning of what he said, he said, and I get it, Genesis twenty seven and twenty eight. Therefore Yahweh gives thee the dew of heaven, the fatness of the earth. You know, when somebody said when they said they give you the fatness when they give you the fatness of something, you gotta understand. Like people, people nowadays understand that the fatness, yeah, that's a good part. That's the part with the flavor, but the part with the nutrition and the part that's going to have the protein in it and have all the vitamins that's going to really do good for you. That's the meat. One thing you want, you want the meat. When you want to get to the, the root of the conversation, you want the meat. You don't want the fat. You want the meat. So that's why you gotta, you gotta get the interpretation, and understanding. That's why. Isaac blessed him with the fatness because he knew he was going out there. And the fatness is, is you understand, on a piece of meat is always something small or a little sliver. And if we understand how history and real history goes, we understand that Esau Edom has had a very short reign of time and a very short reign of time in, in, throughout history period. Like any time they have came into power, it's always been a very short extent. And that's why, because they got the fatness. It's never intended to be a long time. Just like now, they, they build up a country in 500 years and now it's on the downturn. And I just want to start, before I start off with Revelation, I just will give you an overview of the section I'm reading, verses 1 through 3. This is talking about the instance when we're referring to Babylon and how Esau Edom helped Babylon enslave us and sack Jerusalem. This is the portion that it's talking about. And when uh, actually, Yahweh had, actually Yahweh had destroyed Babylon, you know, through Shem, this is, this is the portion that this is talking about. So I'm going to jump into it. Revelation 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of a bottomless pit, a bottomless pit and a great chain on his hand. And he laid hold, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, that bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. And a feet sealed up and sealed him, sealed upon him, that he should be deceived the nations no more. To a thousand years should be up and fulfilled, and after that he must be loose in a, in a little season. So people got to understand is that from the beginning our people we we had rulership from the beginning at the very at the very beginning of time. Even when Babylon was even when Babylon was prominent a prominent nation, we had our own segment of rulership. And when he was referring to Satan or the de or the devil or the wicked, he's really referring to Esau Edom, or he's referring to Cain, or he's referring to that you know that nation. Because that nation is where Satan, that's where it uprises from. Or his, his um, ideology uprises from the most. So when he's talking about this, he's talking about when <clears throat> we always had a, con a continuous fight of dominion over, you know, with Esau Edom. For many, many times with our ancestors, just like Shem, for a long time, Shem was fighting a lot of people in Babylon, because you got to understand, they were trying to push the truth, because they already understood that that was the coming of Yahweh was coming. So what they try to do is they try to usurp the truth by basically, um, by basically making a. Uh, that's where you get the ideology of you know Semiramis, Nimrod, and Cush, the fake uh, virgin birth. That's where you get that from, because they wanted to usurp the Most High. They wanted to create a new religion before his, his birth came. So that's why Shem came, and he had to, he had to kill him. He had to destroy that ideology. And that's what that's talking about in the beginning when he said he had to shut it up in a pit. He had to shut the ideology up in a pit because he had to, he had to shut it up so it would be no more. But it was only it was only shut up for a thousand years. And if you understand, since the creation of time, a thousand years is a very very short instance of time. So the devil could be shut up, or the, the ideology itself could be shut up for a thousand years, but then let loose again. It can it can make all that work. You just break all that work down again. You know. All the work that we did, our ancestors did to try to right the wrong, it's all undone because the devil let loose because we we did the wrong thing. We backtracking. That's basically what I want to get out of out of this at the end. Is like we keep backtracking, we keep going back. He keep getting let loose because we letting him loose. We taking our foot off his neck. And I want to jump to Job. <clears throat> and also another thing, like the first example would it also would be is like. In um, Genesis, when it talks about how people would chase Cain, they would kill Cain. That's the first example of our ancestors actually, you know, chasing and killing off and shutting the devil up. That would be a good example of a perfect precept. Is he was chased off in the wilderness, and he was to be in the wilderness away from the people, away from the law. 
in a jump down to Job thirty, uh, Job chapter thirty verses five to seven, and they were driven forth from among men, and they cried after them as they were a thief, to dwell in the cliffs, as of the valleys and the caves of the earth, and in rocks among the bushes they they braid, and under the needles they were gathered together. So basically, I just read that again, understanding just like I just like I said earlier. Our ancestors basically chased them away. They chased them off. They ran them off. They ran them off into the cliffs and the mountains, the parts that nobody ever wanted to go to, because the, these people were causing were causing wickedness among their nation. So basically, the only way to get rid of it was they had to drive these people among among the from them. So that's where you get that. That's where you get the understanding from the Job thirty five to seven. And also, I'm gonna uh, jump to everyone everyone's favorite verse, John eight forty four. And ye are ye are the father of the devil. The lust of your father you would do. He was a murderer from the beginning, which is talking about Cain, which I just said earlier, that's who we chased off in the beginning. He's still chasing the off, but he's still chasing that bloodline. And the bold not the truth. He didn't want the truth. He didn't want to he didn't want to follow the law. He, he didn't care about your house. He didn't care about none of that. Because he was not in the truth. The truth was not in it. It was never in him from the beginning because he was never in the seed of Adam. You know, you get the understanding he was from Satan or no dice. And when he had spoken a lie, he had spoken his own. When he is a liar, the father and the father of it. So we understand that he is a liar and he's the father of it. He creates lies. So everything he says will be a lie. A lie on top of a lie. That's why we're in the world now and you see the real is like uh, have to uncover so many lies. Like it's it's ridiculous how many how many truths we have to tell to correct all these lies out here because they're just lying just, just for the fun of it. To cover up because my mom always told me you gotta tell so many lies. To cover up that one line you said at the beginning, if you just told the truth, that would just been it, you know. You wouldn't have to keep lying about it. But the fact they keep telling they keep telling lies, they have to tell another lie, then another lie, then another lie. So it's always going to it's going to perpetuate lies, and that's what they're talking about, because there was never any truth in them from the beginning. And I'll let uh, brother Darren take it over from here. Uh, I got you. So I'm gonna talk about four. All right. Uh, and I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai, and for the word of Yahweh, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Hamashiach a thousand years. So what is he? T he's talking about um, mostly the elect. Because, you know, all of us are not going to make it out of there. You know, they said we're going to be sh uh, saved scarcely. So what he's talking about is, you know, a few of us are going to have to either take the mark or be beheaded. And you got to understand the elect are going to reign for a thousand years before, you know, the other uh, two-thirds start to be uh, born and things like that. Five, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Just like I said, the elect are going to reign first with the Hamashiach. And mm -hmm. then the two-thirds will be regenerated through uh, the elect. Six, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, or such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of Yahweh and of Hamashiach, and shall reign with him a thousand years. <clears throat> uh, so, what this also is talking about is how, you know, Esau even created that false images of Hamashiach and forced all the nations to worship. Uh, also referred to, you know, Alexander the Great and Babylon talking about the beast. So what you got to understand is, um, you read Rebel, uh, Romans, I say read chapter 1, verse 1, I mean 21 through 24. You got to understand uh, Pope Alexander the Fourth created, you know, this false image of uh, Hamashiach because uh, um, he basically used his son, you know, Caesar, Bor uh, Caesar Borgia, and that's what they were worshiping them. Was was him, which is a false idol, and a lot of like eighty five percent of our people still worship that image, or they understand that he's mm -hmm. a black man, but still use that false name. Y'all also understand that Alexander the Great of, of Macedonia, he's also from the tribe of Amalek, which is a part of Esau Edom, who thinks, you know, he's the top tribe out of Esau Edom, and you know when he conquered a uh, majority of the world, and that's ideologies, you know, Rome. Greece, all those are a part of the beast system. 
uh, Job 924 is praying. He said, The earth is given to the hands of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges. Therefore, if not, where and who is he? He's talking about Esau Edom, you know, whether it's through Alexander the Great or it's through anybody else. <clears throat> They're covering up the truth because they want to be worshipped. They want to hide the history of, you know, Jacob being the true uh, mm -hmm. people, just like they did with the Bible, you know. First Maccabees 3 and 48 says, and laid open the book of the law where the heathen has sought to paint likeness of their images. So if you understand the book of Maccabees, then you understand that it was basically the children of Israel versus, you know, betrayers, you know, that went against them. And also just like war, because, you know, everybody around them that encompassed them were always enemies. It was always Israel in the middle of them. And they always had to fight and go against them. And when they got a hold of their uh, holy testimony like the bible they changed the names and changed the pictures of them you know and painted them into their image <clears throat> wisdom of solomon also talks about it in um chapter 14 verses 15 and 16 it says for a father afflicted with untimely mourning and has made an image of his child soon taken away now honored him as a god which was then a dead man delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices thus in process of time an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law and graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. So that's what I was talking about. Uh, Pope Alexander the Fourth, when he used uh, his son Caesar Borgia, Caesar Borgia, to um, to basically falsify the true image of Hamashiach and let his you know put his son in that place, which is also you know of course along with you know many errors that they written in the Bible. You know, just like I said, First Matthew three and forty eight to continue to push these lies and such like Brother Paris was saying before, we have to give all these truths in order to break down these lies because it's so much of it. And 85, like I said, 85% of our people are still stuck with lies. Even if you break down to them, you know, the true image of the Hamashiach, they still argue about his name. They still argue about nonsense. Um, Isaiah 29 and 22, therefore thus saith Yahweh, who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall not be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. So here's an account of the reign of the saints. For the same space of time as Satan is bound, those who suffer with Hamashiach shall reign with him in his spiritual and heavenly kingdom in conformity to him in his wisdom, righteousness, and holiness. Like I said, this is what he's talking about with, uh, you know, the elect, you know, who don't make it out. They're either going to be revamped you know, to be, uh, to come back when Hamashiach comes back and be one of those fighters, or they just get put to sleep until it's time for the kingdom to start, and they're going to be the first ones. That's like they say, the first is last, and the last is first. Mm -hmm. So that's what he's talking about. That's the first, um, that's the first resurrection. All right, and then, you, you know, of course, you know, two-thirds and other nations die, as well as the false prophets, and all of them, they, they die in the lake of fire. And that's when judgment happens. Then they get brought, you know, they get regenerated into the kingdom. Uh, and, you know, when the kingdom comes back, everything else is going to be in order. You know, the true doctrine is going to be embedded into our bodies, basically, because we're going to be filled with the Ruach HaKodesh. And we're going to be able to see things just like the Hamashiach does. And we're going to continue to reign over the nations, even though all the nations will have to come and worship the Hama, worship the Hamashiach as well as Yahweh. We're just going to be the judges of them, and we're going to be one sitting the order. Just like you gotta understand, the nations sway to us. That's why Jacob is at one end of the spectrum, and Esau Edom is at the other end of the spectrum. He, like mm -hmm. he told you in Second Ezra six and nine, he told you, you know, Esau is the end, Jacob is the beginning. So, regardless, I mean, they both got a chance to reign, but he also proved the point that Esau Edom is not fit to reign. And he's just causing destruction. So now you got to bring order because the balance of it is thrown off because of us, of course. And you also had traitors, but you also got to understand he punishes us as a nation. So when he's punishing us as a nation, we all got to go through it. So for that, he has to reset the balance of it because we screwed it up. Even the saints did, you know, even if they wasn't actually doing the trouble, our nation, you know, our nation is still messed it up. But I'm gonna hand it off to Brother Paris to uh, finish off. And uh, just like uh, Brother Darren was talking about, um, and just like he said, even though the saints weren't doing it, just like and just like the Most High looks at it, they were letting it slide. They took they took the hands back. Like I said, they took the foot off their neck. 
you pressing up, you letting it slide. So even though you you yourself, you might not be doing that, but you letting all this wickedness slide before you and in front of you. And the most high looks at it like you're doing wrong too because you letting it slide in your presence. Because I wouldn't let it slide in my presence. That's how he's saying it. So we always have to keep that in mind. Like, even though we're keeping ourselves straight, we got to understand, like, the the main reason why we're working hard to get ourselves corrected so we can give so we can give the fighting chance for everybody around us so we can be that like for everybody around us. But the only way to get that started is to get us inside started. Then it works outward. Outward. Like I said, we got to be spiritually in sync, bro. Spiritually in sync. And just like Brother Darren was talking about earlier, like he said, we'll know the the beginning of the end of the time. We'll know that you saw Edom rain. Is here, so we know it's the end, end of the beginning, end of the time. And just like you said, the lake of fire, and that's what I'm going to touch on in uh, Revelation 20, uh, verses 7 to 10, because this is the last showdown. This is the uh, rule. This is the rule of uh, Esau, Edom, or Satan. And the final, and if you want to get a uh, kind of a, like a historical reference, that this is basically talking about the Roman Catholic rule up until now, up until you know you have your dumb diversions that was in 1492 that put us in perpetual slavery, if you understand that, that put all the Sarians, the Sarians is just another word for Hebrews, that were non-pagan into perpetual slavery. So you look that up, 1492, done the verse. And also up until now, and so we're still in perpetual slavery too, if you don't understand, it's just an amendment in the Constitution. It's just written up like, but we're still in that same perpetual servitude. But I'm gonna get into that in verse seven. And when a thousand years are expired, Things shall be loose and out of his prison. And you should go to see the nation, which are, are on the four corners of the earth, Gog, Magog, and gather them together into battle. And a number of them who is <clears throat> who is at the sea in the center of the sea. And they went up to the breadth of the earth and compassed of the camp of the saints about and in the beloved city. And the fire came down and Yahweh out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil deceived them and was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. And the beast and the false prophets are there, and they torment in the day of night forever and ever. So just like you said earlier, just like you said, after um, Babylon is destroyed and we're put back and we're set back and we're with Hamashiach and we're back in the land, you got to understand that they're still going to be coming after us. They're still going to be coming out of our heads. Like they're still going to be, they're still going to be trying to, because you got to understand, even though, even though they understand that Babylon has fallen, but the curse is going to fall upon them because they did wickedness to us too, and they're still going to be doing wickedness because they're not going to want to fall at all. You got to say it's not in them to do it. So the only way to correct them is for them to go to traumatic traumatic events. So that's what Yahweh does. So you, when we understand that, is when, that's why it says it will, it will encompass the camp. It will encompass us in the saints, in the beloved city. And this is when it talks about this is when it talks about when Yahweh will come out the sky. He will crack the sky. This is talking about he will come in and he will devour them all. He himself. And that's what he's talking about. He will plead with it. He will plead to the people. And when he pleads, and he's not talking about getting on his hands and knees, he's talking about pleading. When he's talking about pleading, he's talking about bloodshed. And you get to understand that, and you get in Joel 3. And also, He's also talking about how you saw Edom, who understand that Babylon, Babylon is also talking about America, but it's also talking about the Babylonian system. And if we understand Babylon is destroyed, but the Babylonian system will still be in in works after Babylon is destroyed, because you still have NATO, Europe, and Russia. They still pushing that same B system. So you gotta understand that the other nations and everybody else will still get and they will get angry with them because they'll understand that these these people have been the root of the problem, and they just got they got got rid of the sec one segment of the problem, but they got to get rid of the whole thing. So the other nation will still turn on the nation. So it's, it's going to be like a full out war, war, and it's going to be war everywhere. And that's what it talks about. And we already touched on this in Revelation 18, when it says, just like it says, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of the fornication. That will still linger on even after the destruction of Babylon. But you got to understand, it takes hundreds and hundreds of years to eradicate that system out of your out of your culture out of your race because you've been attached to it for so long it's very hard to just detach from it just like our people we we will, we will have to go just like i said we'll be in our land but we had to go through at this point a traumatic event to even get to this point you got to even to change people a race of people like that the most high has to put you through traumatic events for your brain to correct itself it's the only way it works and 
And another thing I want to say is, um, this is the final showdown. This is when your how will will uh will shut up Satan forever. And just like it says, he like it says he has indignation for Esau forever. He will wipe that look off the face of the earth. Well, that's what it's talking about. If he's going to get rid of that that wickedness, that fake false image of Christ, all the beast the beast system period of Babylon, anything attached to it is talking about the pagan system. It's talking about the false ideology is talking about the, the the false credit system, anything attached to the banking system, all that's going to be destroyed. Just like it talks about in Revelation 18, the great millstone will be cast and it will break. It's not talking about just Babylon, America, but it's talking about the system as a whole, all of the earth will break. And all the nations and the people, they will rise up and rejoice. And just like it says in Revelation 12 and 9, and that great dragon, dragon was cast out, that old servant called the devil, Satan, which deceived the whole world, which is cast, which he cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So you got to understand his angels, and another word for angels is just agents. And you understand even the devil has agents. He has people that work for him, that's under him, so-called the Rothschilds and all these other wicked families. He also has entities that work on the spiritual side for him, too. But all this is under the will and the power of you. How about you now, shot? And like I said, they will, will cast them out of heaven. And there's a duality meaning to that. Cast them out of heaven meaning cast them out of rulership. Like I said earlier, that Babylonian system will be destroyed. So we're going to cast that out and we're going to get rid of that. And it's going to be replaced. Just like Brother Darian said, the order will be replaced back to how it's supposed to be. And we'll replace that system with the righteous system of yeah, how about you now, shot? Like, you have to praise him, you have to worship him, you have to follow the law, eat correctly, to even be acknowledged on this earth, period. And that's how it will be. Because, like, now, you got to acknowledge and praise so-called Esau Edom in his system. It will be just like that, but it will be righteous in the way of the Bible. And it won't be no questions about it. And um, uh, Revelation 18 and 10, just to um, wrap it up before I give the Brother Darian, standing afar, <clears throat> far off, Fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city of Babylon, that mighty city, for one hour is thy judgment to come. So, he, so she's saying, just like it said, that judgment, just like, just like you said, it comes quick and it destroys very quick. You gotta understand, right now we're in the midst of Babylon's judgment. Like, it's just gear, it's building up and it's building up and it's gearing up. Everything she's done to all these nations is gonna finally get exposed and it's gonna get let loose. And we have to understand that this, ju this judgment is. Is um, it's something that's perpetuated around the earth. It's not just Babylon. It's the system, and I want people to understand that the system perpetuates that it's more than just America. But America is the strong arm that pushes it. But you still have NATO and European countries that will still be pushing this afterwards. That's another key part that I want you to get an understanding from that portion of Revelation that there's still going to be wickedness going on after we're in the land. And I'll let you take over verse 11. All right, so I'm going to read 11 through 15. I'm going to just go close it out with the rest of it. So 11, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Yahweh, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell, and de delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So what he's talking about is the final judgment. You know, uh, at the end of the day, you get judged. So uh, I don't know if people understand what life after death uh, it's in the apocrypha, but they took that part out. I'll probably add a link to the bottom. So the way death happens, it happens in two ways, which people still keep thinking that you just die and go to heaven. No, that's not how that works. Nope. It happens in two different ways. Well, two different standpoints, but in seven different ways on each side. So basically, if you follow the law, statutes, and the holy days, and you keep the commandments, um, you are able to see the treasures that are to come about. And, you know, and things like that and you get put to sleep until the new kingdom comes about or unless he chooses to send you back to earth through you know uh
get to inherit and you get to see basically previews of the kingdom and you basically it's basically in a way to make you feel bad because this is what you you were supposed to receive but you didn't want to listen you wanted to be rebellious and things like that so you just basically get put in a pit you get put into a pit and you just wait it out until judgment and if like you like you said if you're not found in the book of life then you get cast into the lake of fire which is the second uh, which is basically like you get you die again basically <laughs> you die again because you got to pay for oh you got to remember in the, in the eyes of the most high i mean when you die it's just your body you know you just get put to sleep if you've done good mm -hmm. if not you know you you basically wallow around the earth and stuff like that in pain and things like that because you didn't abide by it so you don't get eternal sleep you want to be hard-headed and you're gonna roam until the end of days so imagine all those people that died in the 1800s 1700s and all that they still roaming the earth today because they didn't do right so mm -hmm. that's what happens and i'm gonna add a we'll add a link to it because you know you just going to youtube and things like that so basically like i was saying everybody gets judged you know from whether you drowned in the river or however you died, you know, the earth is going to spit you up and you're just going to be waiting in line for, you know, to be judged. And you're not going to be able to say nothing. You're just going to be looking like deer in the headlights because your sins are going to confess against you and there's nothing else for you to say. And then for those, you know, just like you said, um, Revelations 22 and uh 18 and 19 you know just for esau edom that's been adding stuff and taking stuff away well they their parts have been taken out of the book of life so they're going to get cast into the lake of fire mm -hmm. and individuals who just been blaspheming you know the holy spirit mm -hmm. and things like that they're going to yeah most basically all the sinners are going to get cast into the lake of fire it just some gonna have it worse than others and then you know all the nations and all that are going to be reborn you know esau edom is going to be a slave just like all the other nations but esau edom is going to get it the worst and that's how it becomes you just the world gets reset for us just like it says in your prayer on earth as it is in heaven so when people are like oh the laws don't matter well these same laws that we're you know we're trying the best to keep these are going to be the same things that govern over heaven you know our dominion that's what heaven means is dominion <clears throat> so that's what people need to understand. You know, you got to keep these laws. And just like I told you, it, it goes into effect, especially when you die. You know, that's how it goes about. So <laughs> that's the final judgment. So for people that just think, oh, we're going to die and you're just going to walk through pearly gates. No, that's that, that false agenda that they've given you. If that's the case, if more people were, if the so-called Esau Edom was afraid of Christianity, then wouldn't it make sense that they would be scared and would want to repent instead of them just like doing saying this is the work of God or like lies like that and still be trying to beat us and torture us to inherit something. Mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah, yeah. Food. That's where Deontay Inferno's really come from. He got he really got a lot of his that book. He got it from the Apocrypha, man. There's a video on that, man. I, I'll try to find it and add it to it. But a lot of Deontay's, Deontay's Inferno that book is just really copyright from the apocrypha, but it can't be a, a copyright from the apocrypha because the apocrypha is something they try to hide. You know, if it's a hidden book, they don't really, you can't copyright something that's hidden. So, so that's really where it came from. I know you're saying the parallels to it, but uh, that level, that, that, a lot of the stuff that, a lot of the uh, symbology that he uses, he got that from uh, the apocrypha. Oh, yeah. That's right. I'm saying he'll, he'll understand it more because, like, it's levels to like everything like mm -hmm. it's, different, it's different definitions for heaven and that's a good book that's a good book to read if y'all if y'all want to read Deontay's Inferno that's a good book a good yeah book so read. people but people don't understand it because you know they be teaching these you gotta lives. have that spirit you gotta have that spiritual meaning I didn't when I read the book I didn't I didn't I never I never seen the apocrypha but after I read it and I reflected on the book I read it again and I understood I was like but he just plagiarized it but I, I'll let you close out. You got anything else you want to say? I just want to add that. I mean, to add to that, what you were saying earlier, I guess Proverbs 20 and 24, when it roughly paraphrased that uh, men's goings are 
of the Lord. So basically, like he was saying in the beginning, everybody got to play their part. And also, people got to understand when America fall, aka Babylon falls, that doesn't that does not mean that that's the end of the world. You have to understand. Mm -hmm. You got to have a period between um, between the chip. It's not just like all right, chip up, then the Hamashiach gonna show up. No, that's not work like that. Nah. You got to give it a period in between for that to set in. So like he's saying when they're up, when they're filling up their bellies. So they're not just gonna fill up their bellies like that because you still got to get the system in place. So while they fill up their bellies, then he's gonna destroy it. You don't know how long that's gonna be about. So and another thing to add on that is like you gotta understand is like one you gotta understand one day in the most highest time is a thousand years. So you gotta understand his process is not the same speed as how we see it. So Oh no. Yeah, that's another that's what that's what people, you gotta keep always keep that in mind when you read in the Bible when you read and he gives you a time span. You keep that in mind, like his time is not your time, it's not the time of the earth. Right. So you gotta you keep it, yeah, that's one add different. Yeah, yeah, it's like a thousand years. Mm -hmm. So just like you saying, we're gonna be rank well basically we're gonna reign for a thousand years, basically a day in the eyes of the uh the most high when we're reigning with the Hamashiach. Again, they'll be reborn and things like that. But you understand, to a power like that, time is irrelevant. He's always that's been just, That's just the easiest way they can put it mm -hmm. into common What's sense. What's time if somebody's always been here? <laughs> Ain't no time. Ain't no time. <laughs> Basically. So we just try to put down revelations because mm -hmm. a lot of people, like when the pastors are teaching it, they, even though the Most High can create all these nonsense that they're coming up with, our coming. Our, we have common sense too. He's gonna, he's, it's gonna be written in a poetic way, but he's gonna make sure it makes sense too. And mm -hmm. you gotta understand how Revelations is different, by, written by different many people. So it's, it's not, not gonna just, be it's like, not just John. It's well, other yeah, prophets. it's gonna jump around. It's gonna go from old to new, and this it basically you're wrapping up the Bible. That's what's yep. going on. And so, yeah, because different, just like you said, different prophets lived at different times. So John lived at one time. You might have somebody else come in, and they might live before him. So it's it's a, it's a it's basically a collage of different prophets writing the final book. So they just tried their best to you know make it line up. So that's why sometimes, like you said, it jumps back and forth. But yeah, just to close with it, I'm gonna read uh, Revelation 22 and 14. It says, "Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city." Uh, 15. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Uh, I'm just going to end at 16. Uh, and I, Yahweh Shai, have sent my angel to, te to testify to you in the churches. I am the root and morning star. So if people haven't seen that video, that's on the end of 16. If people haven't seen that video, you might want to go to our, uh, YouTube and look at how, you know, basically the life of Yahweh Shai and getting the understanding of 16, how he's the root and the offspring of David. He's the Alpha and Omega. I mean, I don't know mm -hmm. how much more clues I can give to people. But, uh, I mean, you got anything to say? I know, sir. You close it out right. You give it thanks to the most high. You close it out, man. All right. Before we leave, we want to give all praises, power, glory, and thanks to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, and Karpadash, double honors to the elders, the prophets, the apostles, the wise men, our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are out there pushing his truth to the four corners of the earth. Christian lives and freedom to do so, doing the best that they can to uphold the law, statute, and the holy days. To them we say shalom, kom yasharala, wa ba ba ba, shalom.